I've been joined in the studio by Pearl Roxon. Pearl is a senior lands administration officer at the Lands Commission. Welcome, Pearl. Thank you. Um, Pearl, do you do you own a land? Yes, I do. Okay, where? In Adenta. You own a land in Adenta. Where is that? Is it the new uh, parts of Adenta? No, it's the old parts of Adenta. All right. So, what, what processes did you go through in acquiring your land? Okay. So basically, before anyone would acquire land, there are a few things that you need to go through to make sure that you won't have issues at the end of the day. Okay. So the first thing is that let's say you've identified a particular parcel of land that you're interested in. You need to find out who has the legal ownership of the land. Now, a lot of processes will come into play when it comes to that. The first thing you do is speak to the people in the area because the neighbors are in a very good position to tell you what issues are on any parcel of land. They, may, they, may, they might be able to tell you that this particular parcel of land has been sold to someone who lives outside the country so many years ago, or this person bought this land from this person, but he hasn't developed it. You do that due diligence on the ground. When you are satisfied with that's who, you, the, the you one the buyer, who, okay, yes, you the buyer, mm. because the onus lies upon you to also do some due diligence to be sure of what you are going into. Right now, when you are satisfied about who is purporting to have ownership, then you approach the person. The person may give you a site plan of that parcel of land, but for clarity's sake. It's good for you to get your own surveyor so you can come to the lands commission then we can give you a surveyor to go back to the site pick the points of the land again mark the boundaries so that you can he can produce a new site plan for you now that will serve to confirm what the landowner is giving to you because sometimes what we see is that you are given a site plan but actually on the ground you are occupying a completely different parcel of land so uh, this surveyor will do a new plan for you. Now, when this plan is ready, you come back to the Lands Commission and conduct an official search. This official search will give you information on the history of the land and who has ownership of the land. It will let you know if there are any judgments, any caveats, or whether the land is state land or not. After you get the reports of the search, if you are satisfied with the information given, then you can go back to the landowner, then you can continue the transaction from there. So you make the necessary payments, he gives you the documents to the land, what we normally call the indenture. Now when you get the indenture, indenture sorry, you don't just leave it at that, because some people get the indenture and keep it in their rooms that they have land documents, so that is it. When you get the indenture, you need to follow through and get it registered get your interest in the land registered and that is when your land you are, you are given the legal backing of ownership of that particular parcel of land so basically these are the processes you go through to acquire land okay. uh, you, you, you have been saying a lot of things i for the purposes of our listeners i would want you to take us through the process again okay you are saying that when you find a land you'd have to make some inquiries from the buyer sometimes they will tell you if they are honest that someone has already purchased the land exactly okay so in that situation if someone has already bought the land why must you go ahead and pay for that same land again so you shouldn't once you find out that someone has bought that parcel of land you stay away from it and get a new parcel that nobody has spoken for okay now so when they come back to the lands commission to do the official search whether the land is registered or not does the official search also indicate whether the land has been sold to another person already no so the thing is the lands commission has information of what is brought to us hmm. if someone has bought a parcel of land the person has not registered it the lands commission will not know about it okay we only have records of what you bring to us so until anybody brings their documents to us for registration 
we may not have the records of it. However, we have records of the boundaries of the various families mm -hmm. and the various stools. So if you are buying a parcel of land, and let's say it's from the Owusu family, we can check in our records to confirm that this particular parcel of land actually falls within the boundaries of the Owusu family. Okay. As to whether the family has sold it to someone prior to selling it to you, until that person brings his document for registration, we will not have that record. Mm. Okay. H have you had the situation where two people have brought uh, same land titles for registration? In danger indenture for registration yes we've had instances like that uh, so what, what, what does the land commission do in this instance okay so we have processes for dispute resolution we have laid down processes that we go through for dispute resolution we would conduct site inspections we would go through various processes to establish the ownership of the land if it gets to a point where the parties are taking legal action then we revert them back to the courts for a resolution if the dispute resolution measures fails we revert them back to courts once they resolve it at the court level they come back to us okay i'm interested in those who sell the land to multiple buyers what does the what does the law say on on such a situation or what does the land commission do about them because eventually looks like uh, the tassel uh, becomes or eventually uh, revolves around the two people who have bought the land mm. and the one who sells the land is is, is nowhere to be found uh, what is the position of the land commission on that okay. Alum, I, I think that we can we can understand this conversation proper if we understand the exact reason the land commission is set up so what does the land commission do? In other words, uh, I mean, these lands are family lands. They are private lands. What has the land commission been established to come into the regulation and management of lands to do? What exactly are you doing? Okay. So as you're saying, mm. even though they are family lands mm. and two lands, the lands commission, per its mandate, is supposed to ensure the judicious use of land to ensure sustainable development. The Lands Commission is also supposed to ensure the registration of all interest in land. Okay. So irrespective of whether your land is to private family states, mm. you are supposed by law to register your interest in land. And that is where the Lands Commission comes okay. in. So the survey and mapping division of the Lands Commission will prepare the necessary plans for you for title registration. Mm. The Land Valuation Division of the Lands Commission will ensure that your stamp duty is properly done so that your documents will be ready for registration mm. the public invested land management division also goes through a few processes with the searches and all that to ensure that the ownership of the land you are purporting as yours mm. is actually yours mm. and then the land registration division of the lands commission will go ahead to do the title registration for you i see so so elom it becomes very obvious that um a lot of people would have to take their destinies into their own hands, especially in the way lands are transacted in this particular country. And I'll explain why I'm saying this. So I was even going to come to that yeah. because it looks like if you don't go to the land commission, they don't know about the land. They yeah. don't. They only know about the boundaries of the yeah. land. Who, which family, or which tool, or which which state agency, or who is the owner of that land? And that ownership is what has been brought to their attention. Yeah, you know. So it means that you can have. Um, you know the land sold to multiple people and if these people until these people come to the land commission in the attempt to register their interest in the land the land commission cannot know who actually bought that land from who right correct right okay so what's the transfer process so for example if the land belongs to the usu family like you said and then i know well i come to buy the land so the indenture would have been in the usu family's name correct exactly what's the process for transfer Okay, so when you say transfer per mm. lands commission parlance, mm. it would mean that the Owusu trans the Owusu family has title. Mm. Okay. In this instance, let's say the Owusu family does not have title. A title over the land. land. Okay. Yes. So you would bring your documents after the stamp duty has been done, mm. the necessary barcoded plans have been produced by the survey and mapping division. You'd submit for registration. 
would go through administrative processes, go through our records, ensure that there are no adverse interests, adverse claims here and there. Mm. If we are satisfied with what we see, if, depending on the situation, we may call for a site inspection or not. Okay. Yes. So when everything is okay, we prepare title plans mandated by the law, mm. and then we would publish it in the dailies. Okay. Open it up so that if anybody has an objection, they can bring it up. Okay. We, the law requires that we give room for 14 days okay. for objections. Mm. So if there are no objections, we go ahead and prepare your title mm. for you. So basically, that's the registration process. It's similar to marriage. You know, mm -hmm. when you want to marry, you go and declare your interest yep. at the court. They publish and say, look, if your husband or wife is one of these people who want to marry each other, come up and say. If you don't come out and say, it, it means then that the people are single and can go ahead and marry. Uh, so, uh, uh, Elon, before you come in, if I buy a land, yep. all right, and then maybe I've been handed the indenture, I didn't take the trouble to go and do the registration, but I've continued, I've started developing the land, maybe I've built, and later on, I want to now come and do the registration process. Does the fact that I had, had built on the land hinder me from registering my interest? No, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. The thing is, legally, you are expected to bring your documents for registration. Originally, when the land title registration process was introduced in Ghana, mm. where it was supposed to take a systematic approach so that we would register for the allodials and then register second transactions. So unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. But then, the Land Act 2020, the Act 1036, mm. has now made it necessary and mandated that before we register any subsequent or any second transaction in land, the allodial interest must be registered because we are trying to cleanse the system of some of these things. Okay, what do you mean by a lot of quite a lot of technical okay, so terms? So what I there. mean is the Owusu family mm -hmm. owns two thousand acres of land okay. in East Legon. Okay, I came to buy one. You've bought one plot of one land. One plot. What the law is saying now is that before Lands Commission registers your one plot of land for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. in my name, in your name, mm -hmm. we need to register the Owusu family's interest. Okay okay first of all first of all and then do transfer of ownership exactly to me to you i see and um so that will mean um who bears the cost of registering the ousu yes so the law has made provisions for the families so that the cost implications are not too much okay we've um there are some Mitigating. exemptions here and there for okay. the allodial families to okay. be able to do that. Yeah. Now, let's assume that uh, that particular family is not, um, maybe um, they sold the land to me so many years ago and I have no one to speak to in the family. Um, could I still go ahead and register the land? Yes, yeah, so the laws of Ghana per the constitution don't work retrospectively. Okay. So once your interest was piled to this we would still make allowance and do your registration okay. for you okay hello your questions yeah uh, thank you Noel. Um, uh, of course you are helping uh, deconstruct this issue i'm still in the studio here with paul roxon a senior land administration officer from the lands commission we are having conversations around land titling indenture registration multiple ownership and all of that but let me come back to the issue of conflicts and also where even before the lands are registered the titling you have even family sometimes you have groups within the family who are laying claim probably is the same family but you have diverse groups and sometimes they try to track lineage and everyone is laying claim to the land but it's just a piece of land and it must have just one title does the land commission have a way of resolving these issues even within the, the, the family these issues fall within the jurisdiction of the courts so okay. usually the families go to court if they have internal wranglings in the family on who is supposed to alienate lands where the lineage is coming from they resolve those issues in court and then we are given the necessary notice okay all right L let me now come back to regulation what exactly uh, because is the lands commission a regulatory commission yes yeah it's a, it's a, it is it is a regulatory agency okay 
all right. from all indications. But Elon, you know what's interesting? No. When you buy a land, you are told on the indenture that this land is sold to you for 99 years. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what that means. Uh, could you explain that phenomenon? Okay. And I have a lot of messages that are coming in. I'll be reading them to you so you answer them anyway. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay, so the constitution, the constitution as, as well as the land act says that no interest in land shall be created, which is a freehold. Now, a freehold interest is when you are given the land forever. Mm. And the laws of Ghana bars that. Okay. The laws of Ghana says that a person can have a leasehold interest in the land. Okay be it school land, be it family land, be it state land. Mm. So that is why when you buy land, the land is given to you on a leasehold basis for okay. a duration, okay. either 50 years, 75 years, 99 years, depending on who is selling the land to you okay. and what interest he also has. Okay. So basically, that's the reason why lands are given for that duration because okay. by law, we cannot hold a freehold interest in land. Mm. It has to be a leasehold. So after, after the 99 years, what happens? After that, the 99 years, legally goes back to the grantor, the person who sold it to you. But then there is a provision made for a renewal. I see. And now the law mandates the grantors to make that, to do that renewal for you without putting you through excessive stress. Hey, this is dangerous. So what if I build, because the excessive stress here could mean a lot. Well, I built on it, I spent money to build and by then i myself may not be i don't i don't think i want to i mean you should be building on the average between age 35 and 40 you know or 45 on the average the average Ghanaian we're building around that age and you're adding 99 so that's like 135 years so it means that virtually uh, the one who bought the land may die you know and leave the land for your family and then at the, at the end of 99 years the people come back and say we don't want to renew the um holding on the land does that mean i'm going to lose my property on the land yes and no okay tell me emphasis about on the no now as i'm saying the law is saying that if your leasehold interest is about expiring the landlord must renew for you okay if for one reason or another mm. he is not renewing for you and then comes the importance of registration. Okay. Because once your interest of land, your interest in land is registered, mm. you have that state backing. You have that legal support. To protect your property protect on the land. To protect your interest in the land. And if the landlord is proving difficult in renewing, you can pursue legal action. So it is compulsory that the landlord must renew, is it? Because if I'm pursuing a legal action, then it means that it is compulsory for the, the I landlord. I wouldn't say compulsory. Mm. But the law I mean, makes provision that they should renew it for you. Not compulsory, compulsory. No, I want to get clarity. You know, when, when we do this, because of uh, education, we want to get clarity as much as possible for our listeners. Okay, so let me give you an example. Right. Let's say you've rented someone's room okay. for two years. Right. That you've, you've done a lot of improvements. Mm. Now the two years is almost up. Mm. And the landlord says... I will not renew. Right. You also want him to renew. Right. You know, usually in instances like this, you would involve rent control as an authority. Right. And then the parties will sit down, go through some negotiations. Right. And the renewal could be done. Okay. So this one, the example we are choosing and what we are discussing may be wrong. The example may be wrong and I'll tell you why. So for the rent control, the, there is actually a law. Um, that gives the landlord the opportunity to decide what to do with their land. And if you did any improvement on the house or the, the property you have rented, the law actually gives you the mandate to uh, let it count towards your rent. So it could count towards your rent. And that negotiation, the law says, it should happen before you do the, 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 the improvement. So you should have that conversation with the landlord before you do the improvement. But this example we are talking about is I bought a land. I have built a huge mansion, which cost me perhaps about 700 or 800,000 Ghana cities to put that up. And I'm hoping that this is going to be the home for myself, my family, my generation yet unborn. 99 years later on, I, I am no more here. My, perhaps my son or my son's son 
is taken over the, the house and then the landowner or the family of the landowner appears and says that look your 99 year uh, lease period is over and we don't want to renew the mandate to continue to hold the land we want you to leave uh, what options are going to be available to me uh, you know especially because i can't move my property for the issue of the rent i can pack out you know you can pack your things out but here i can't move my property and say i'm lifting the house and i'm going to put it on uh, another land you know so i'm wondering what how difficult that would be especially if the landowner decides that they are not going to renew uh, the land holding okay would it be the case that i have to sell the property to them what what, what actually happened okay so when we look at the section 51 of the land act mm. it talks about implied covenants okay in a lease agreement okay and one of these implied covenants is the renewal okay so whether or not the landowner actually states in the indenture that after 99 years i will renew for you mm. is immaterial okay because the law says the renewal is implied implied perfect. so you are supposed to renew perfect. it perfect so that puts my heart person. at rest because i was so worried about my children and my grandchildren no, so it's okay. <laughs> because the law has expressly stated it mm. that's what i'm saying if the person is being difficult you can pursue legal action because the law is very clear on it that okay. is an implied covenant yeah, yeah, and yeah. therefore they should renew for you right Alam, i don't know if you have any questions i want to pick up some uh, of the uh the what's messages, it called? The messages that are coming yeah through. so you do the messages and uh, right i'll come back to pell and ask about whether they have a hand in how uh, prices of lands uh, are determined. Higher, are okay. determined. Right. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Now, I have some messages coming in through our Facebook platform. This is from Mickey. Mickey says, Good morning, Noel. Uh, this land issue uh, you are raising is uh, very important uh, and it is very bad. The Land Commission must help resolve this. I am a victim, a long, stand, a long distance family member who calls himself an uncle, is taking what is rightfully mine. So, um, I don't understand what you mean by rightfully yours. Is it the case that uh, you are supposed to be the one inheriting the land? Perhaps I would assume that is what he means. And then I'll come to that. That uh, The land is a family land. Maybe that was the portion of the land was given to my father. And then my father handed it over to me. But my father's brother, maybe in the absence of my father, pops up and says that he wants to take that land. And so I will come to that. Maybe you could take note of that. And then uh, we could answer that. This one is from Paya. He says, I am Yao Dansu. Please, I want to know whether or not um, if a person can register a land as freehold or forever. As um, Okay, so the, I think that has been answered. We said that is not possible. The law does not allow that. Uh, you can't do that. This is from Atanga. Bernard, he says, good morning from Kuntunasi around Bosumchi. You are doing a great job and a fantastic show by all standards. Please greet. Uh, okay, I think these are um, spam messages. I treat them as such. These are people who are not necessarily uh, listening to the program, but uh, are sending in their messages. Well, I'll try and go to uh, our WhatsApp platform and see um, what um, messages are coming in. Hello, you can ask your question while I do with this. Yeah, well, so as, as a regulator, I, I want to know how prices of plots are determined especially in the capital city and why that huge variation between the prices within the urban centers and the other places peri-urban centers in the rural areas okay so ghana's land market is an open market and as such the prices are d determined by the forces of demand and supply okay. so unfortunately we don't regulate the prices of land because they are they are determined by the forces of demand and supply so once the demand goes up the price goes up and and, and that's problematic isn't it well uh, that that you leave a resource such as land to because it is not state owned these lands well, are not state owned and so once they are not state owned it will be very difficult for the government to say that they are they are going to regulate the prices through the lands commission you and uh, then we may be calling for an entirely new act that empowers the uh, lands commission perhaps to establish some glass ceilings uh, and price ceilings in the market but i <laughs> i don't yeah, think that, that is if, going to happen if, if, if your regulation does not cover 
prices. No, it doesn't. For, for, for instance, if lands are in certain prime areas, you can put a ceiling on it. Probably industrial areas, you put a ceiling on it. And probably in rural areas, you put a ceiling on it. Because it is just outrageous uh, the amount or prices of some lands in the capital city. And you would wonder whether there is uh, some sort of regulation in, 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 in the way and manner people sell lands. Doesn't it... Is it not something that the Lands Commission should consider? Well, it's not part of our mandate as of now. So, we can't speak to it. Do you think it should it should have been part of your mandate? No, as you rightly said, mm. because they are not state land, mm. it would be difficult for... It is actually honest. possible. I mean, a no, law is possible. a law. Everything yeah. is possible. Yeah, a law there is a law. If you pass a law or you advocate for a law that says that you can regulate the prices and say, look, in this area, we do our own assessment. In fact, for the rent control, they actually would do assessment of your your property, mm -hmm. and they determine the price. You are yeah. aware of that, right? The yes. rent control. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. they do. They they assess the property, and so we could. I mean, this could be an advocacy. We we'll start and say that look, we are dying. Oh, the young folks, you have to pack all your life savings to buy one piece of land, and if you don't take care, you lose it. You know. That's and true. so this could be an advocacy. Yes, it's true. Mm. At the same time, even though Lands Commission as an as an office, because of our valuation division and the work that they do, mm. we have land values okay. for the various areas. Okay. So we can give you a value. Let's okay. say a parcel of land in East Legon frontage is a road. You give us a description. There could be a land value given. Okay. But then we, won't, we cannot regulate. So if, let's say we give you the land value as 100,000 CDs mm. and the landlord is selling it at 200,000 CDs. We cannot go and regulate him and say, look, the land value is this. So sell it at this price. Okay. So even though we have land values per the work that we mm. do, we cannot regulate the prices at which families and schools Hello, This are. should be the next phase of our advocacy. No, uh, yeah, certainly because yeah. I... Because we are interested parties. To be, to be very honest, <laughs> well, I... I, I think it is it doesn't sound nice for a uh, lands regulator in Ghana to say that they cannot put a price ceiling on how an individual can send, mm. sell land in this country because, purely because they don't have the legal backing and well, that's that yeah, yeah, and I agree yeah. but it is a conversation you should consider mm. especially pe because people are largely exploitative mm. and they are just profiteering and you know that for the amount they are giving you for some piece of land almost at closer to a shaman which they are calling east legon hills going for uh, some hundred thousand ghana cities sometimes even more and you are wondering the place is not motorable doesn't have access to all the amenities the place is largely rural but because it's closer to an urban center they use all of these things to make the price and you are forced to buy it. And the Lands Commission is sitting just at cantonments and they say they don't have anything to do about it. Maybe when we let our legislators work on it, then when we are given the mandates. But when legislation is uh, about to be promulgated, do you, does the Lands Commission make input? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. So course. I, I think that's a question we can raise. Yeah, because that having, having the Land Commission over the years, and I'm not blaming you, Pell. I'm not blaming um, any individual official of the Lands Commission, but the Lands Commission at, at, at generally. Because then this particular act, which you um, promulgated, of course, you would have had a huge input in that and that would this act would come as a result of all of the problems you have realized that are occurring within the land acquisition you know or the land market let me put it that way okay. and to mm -hmm. ignore uh, such an important component of your regulation uh, because the, the 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 law gives you so much power yes so mm -hmm. there's something in the law too that would help okay with this thing mm -hmm. now this law is holding the family heads this two heads the chiefs as fiduciaries of the land mm -hmm. okay. so what, now what's what that what does that mean okay so like trustees mm. okay it's holding them like trustees okay and now they are accountable for every action they take on the land how much they sell it for what the money was used for per this law they are supposed to give an account to to the lands commission 
So oh. they are working with the the office of administrator of stool land okay. to do that. Okay. And so they're supposed to give an account of all the earnings of the transactions done and everything. Mm. So if they sell a piece of land for this much, then the OASL will come in in conjunction with the Lands Commission and then we work with them together. So now the law has set up customary land secretariats. The, the, the law is requiring that every family, every stool, every skin, together with the Office of Administrator of Stool Lands and Lands Commission, set up a customary land secretariat that is supposed to handle their, their records, their alienation of land, which land has been sold, which land has been leased, for how long, what mm. was the consideration. Mm. And based on that, they can also render accounts. Mm. So, I mean, based on this law, hopefully all these issues you are raising will be addressed. Well, Alam, let me read some messages that are coming in. This one says, because of all of the hassles in procuring land, mostly we want to buy from real estate developers. How safe it is to buy land from real estate developers? I had most of the real estate lease uh, real estate lease so the land isn't really mine how true is this please and uh, it says and please the renewal will it cost another money for or it is free so the, I'm, I'm sure they are talking about the 99 years uh, and 75 years and all of that the, the lease period and the renewal so he's asking the person is asking if it is safe to buy um, a land from real estate uh, developers okay so when we say safe land to buy safe land is when you've done your due diligence on the ground you've conducted your searches and the reports is in favor of the person selling the land to you be it a real estate developer a family or a stool or even an individual so the most important thing is when you did your search what was the result is it the person who is purporting to claim ownership mm. when you went to the ground are there issues on the ground that is when you can determine safe but as we are here, we cannot say that this real estate developer right, is safe right, or not. It right. depends on what the records will reveal. Right. And then also, as he's saying that the real estate developer has a lease and therefore the land is not really his, the real estate developer cannot give you what he does not have. Mm. So if the real estate developer was given 90, a 99-year lease from the chiefs, mm. That's what he, he cannot you. give you anything more than that. Mm. Whatever he will give you will be less 19 if the, the highest he can give you is 99 years less one day right because that is what he has right so it all depends on what they really and that need. also depends on how long they acquire the land and when they are selling it to you exactly so if you got it at 99 years and then he sold he sold it after 10 years to you it means you have 89 years left not necessarily because okay. it also depends on what he's giving you some okay. real estate developers will give you a sub lease for 50 years oh okay okay and then you must come back to the real estate and renegotiate exactly okay now um this one says good morning noel there are instances where a chief marries two before he dies he gets to have two families one being the step the two families meet in court one wins and sell the land and later the other one goes to court and wins back and later the second one who has won comes back and says the first one who sold the land is not the right person because party b has won in court so either you repay or they take back their land how can such an issue be addressed okay so as i said earlier in ghana our laws and our judgments don't work retrospectively so if a judgment is rendered today and maybe that it goes on appeal and the other party lost unless expressly stated in the judgment that the person who previously had it and all his assigns and all those who so he sold to and all his grantees are affected unless expressly stated in the judgment the judgment will not work retrospectively please i don't know if you get what i'm right. trying to say right. so unless the judgment clearly states that even though you sold to a and b and c despite the, the fact that we are giving judgment all those people are affected mm. then it's a different thing but if the judgment just rules in favor of the other party, then it will not work retrospectively to say that, okay, then because I got this judgment in 2021, you that you got the land in 2010 
and come and pay back to me. Okay. Unless the judgment expressly stated okay. that all those people are affected. Okay. And when they are affected, the one who won the new case determines what to do with the land, is it? Yes. So when, when, when you are the judgment creditor and the mm. judgment expressly states that all those interests should be deleted, mm. then they can come and atone tenancy to you. Okay. Negotiate with you. and then They can negotiate or decide that they want to use the land for something else or move. And they scatter your properties. I be. see. Someone has sent in a message. He says, I'm a part of a land guard. And as we talk now, we are even on operation <laughs> while listening. And my feelings has changed. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, I was going to come back to Pell. To, to, I'm, I'm sure uh, issues of land guard has come to your desk uh, for quite a number of times. And I, but what, but what do you know about land guards? Who are they? what exactly is their role in the scheme of land acquisition and defense and also how who are, who are, who are taller they because they they come across as people who are very powerful and no one is, a, is, is able to stop them okay so when we look at the land act it describes land guards and please i read it okay. says a land guard means a person engaged by another person to use unreasonable force in the protection of land this is what so the they are law, recognized by the law this is what the law describes as a land guard <laughs> now the law <laughs> explains who a land guard is because now this land act has made their activities completely criminal the land guards themselves those who engage the land guards mm. those whose lands they are protecting for them so to speak all those people, all those actions have been made criminal mm. by this land act. And therefore, if you're a land guard or you get someone to act as a land guard on your on your land for you, you it's are, a criminal act. The and therefore the law can take you on. Mm. That's that's interesting. Yeah, very 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 interesting. And uh, so this process has has it beaten any of the defaulters yet anyone has a lot caught up with anyone who has engaged a land guard has it arrested any land guard yet to to the best of your knowledge to the best of my knowledge because i'm not privy to what happens in the courts okay. I cannot and, the, and, the, and the police i mean once it's a criminal case you're, yeah. you're yes. talking about the police so yeah. well um the more messages coming in this one says noel and your crew has there has there been uh the history of ghana where a chief has been prosecuted for selling a land to two individuals we need to set examples there are too much loopholes when it comes to laws governing land issues they only have information to first come first serve abdul aziz sent that one in and uh, take note of that i'll, I'll read some more message this one says greetings noel and your crew please i want to ask the land commissioner that who is entitled um of arranging oh gutters and buildings to, uh, in fact um i found it difficult to read that message this one says i am samuel by name i want to know if i own a land and have built or have properties on the land the law of land commission says i only own the land i have bought for 99 years okay i think she has explained that if you're coming to buy my land, i determine how how long i want to give it to you for and um, i i would have to come back and renew it if the time is due this one says my name is fifi may god bless you for coming up with the with this very educative program i am disturbed about why it takes too long to get your land registered huh that would be an issue of interest i have i have registered a land according to them they have reached a point of printout and the last time i was told about this printout is more than four months always it is the same story printing out printing out why charlie when people get frustrated by the delays in the system but what does print out is it the printer is not working or they don't have see for sheets? um Pell, we can't find ignorance here these are stories we've heard over and over i wish your pro was actually speaking to i mean it's a a, a very uh, good conversation we are having so there is no problem there is no hard feeling but we need to you know hold the 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 bull by the horn yeah you know and one of the issues we have heard of is the delays in the processes of registering a land and when there is a delay in that particular process 
uh, there could be a denial. Delayance is in itself a denial. A denial, you know, and then it would force people to go into all manner of uh, bribe payments, uh, Goro boys, the phenomenon of Goro boys, and so on and so forth. So, um, Madam Piaro. <laughs> mm. It looks like um, she's, she's ready. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Um, yes. So, great. All right, Pell. Uh, Eunice. Yeah. So Eunice is the assistant communication officer at the Lands Commission. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I would want to react to the delays people experience with the Lands Commission. You know, most often than not, you realize that documents that the public actually submit to the Lands Commission. After going through them, you realize that there are documents you cannot even register. One, reason being that they actually fail to do their due diligence. Mm. You know, people do not have an understanding of how they go about their land transactions. Okay. A survey we conducted somewhere around last year actually proved that most Ghanaians are less informed about the processes involved in acquiring land in Ghana. So largely, you realize that people do not understand where to even start from when they want to acquire land. So whoever you are taking the land from or you're taking your lease from actually matters. When you submit your document to the Lands Commission and we, after realizing that we cannot register your land for you, due to one reason or the other we prompt our applicants sometimes they even fail to come for their documents to go and then resolve the issues and then resubmit so as for delays you know we have operated in a manual environment for long now there are interventions some of these interventions we are experiencing now is the move to actually digitize all our manual records mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so as we speak now the last commission has actually introduced the online service okay. where in the comfort of your home one could apply for any of our services being that a search or land title registration or maybe certified true copy or other services mm. that we provide mm. so largely we have operated in a manual environment mm. Thanks be to um, the good leadership we have at the Lands Commission, who actually saw the need to digitize, and with the help from the Vice President's office, who's actually bought into the idea of going digital, so that we adapt the ease of doing business approach. And so people now need to understand where to start from. Mm. If I want to buy land, I don't purchase land or go into any transaction, just like I've seen a tomato on the market and I feel it looks good, so I should buy it. Due diligence is key. We have learned people, lawyers, who sometimes come and exhibit their ignorance mm. when it comes to land acquisition and matters of land. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and that's fair. Yes, that that's fair. That is fair because and I am not a, a land economist. I haven't been trained Sure, at so it is the main so we'll reason ignorance we actually a... embarking on a serious sensitization mm. yeah mm. so we have wrote our plans mm. to uh, engage the various stakeholders mm. the general public is the major stakeholder mm. and so the mmd is we have the um the media, Ghana, the the media, media a core a core <laughs> team a core stakeholder group mm. that we cannot relegate to the background mm. when it comes to issues of sensitization because they have the platform mm. and you realize that even when you meet some of them they do not even understand the issues yeah, of including land. myself exactly mm. so we have a plan to to engage all these people let them understand mm. because when they understand they can also explain to the general public mm. and so the last commission as we said has rolled out a plan to engage all these people our internal audience our internal staff are key understanding what even this new land act is all about mm. what um, bearings it has on our day-to-day -day activities and all that right. so we want to actually plead with the general public to exercise or take issues of due diligence very seriously otherwise you may throw all that huge sums of money into the gardens for nothing mm. yes people have paid huge sums and they have lost their lands and it has resulted in this long protracted court issues mm. never-ending issues all because they fail to do one thing right and that's the due diligence when you come across any parcel of land the first most thing to do is to come to the lands commission um require the services of a qualified surveyor mm. who will take you to the land 
Now, this is the land I identified. I think I like it. It lies very well, and uh, I want you to pick the coordinates. Prepare a site plan for me. You ran to the Lands Commission. I found one land at uh, East, East Legon. Could you please go with me and then pick the coordinates and prepare a site plan for me? Once a site plan is prepared for you, you know that that land you've been shown is represented on paper. You see the land. They can show you a site plan which may not reflect what you even see mm. on grounds. So the most important thing to do here is to require the services of a, a, a professional surveyor mm. at the Lands Commission. He goes with you to site and pick the coordinate, prepares a site plan for you. Then you run back to the Lands Commission to conduct your search. Right. You know, before um, 2008, we were... Um, for, uh, I think four separate agencies and uh, the Land uh, Lands Commission Act, the Act 2008 Act 767, actually brought all four agencies together. together. And so all our records, as we speak now, we are in the process of um, integrating all synergizing the syner them. exactly. So mm -hmm. you have to conduct searches with the Public Invested Lands Management Division just to know whether it's a government land or is any land earmarked for any government project. Mm. And then you have to go to the survey and mapping division where they would tell you if it's, it's the land is plotted in any name, then you go to land title registration. Mm. That is another um, search you need to conduct right. to tell who has certificate on that parcel. Right. So you have to do all these three searches to be sure of where you are getting the land from. Mm. Whether the person claims to be the Alodia owner of the land is true, truly the person who okay. has the right okay. to uh, alienate yeah. land to now, whatever. Now, I have a situation. So, um, the family that owns the land actually sold the land to an individual. Yeah. And a, a new indenture has been prepared that shows that the land has been transferred from the family to the individual. Yeah. And that, that indenture is prepared by the Lands Commission. No. No, oh, okay. no, that that's not fall under our remit because we don't prepare in that. But we have professionals, we have lawyers mm. who can help in getting your indenture done right. Okay, okay. But we have people who um, actually uh, do offer those services in town. We have oh, professionals. So you could have, have an them. you could have an indenture on the land and it's not uh, correct. Indenture. Having an indenture on the land actually for me means nothing. Okay, because you can have ten people have same indenture to same parcel, mm. and. The one who actually owns the land is the one who has secured the land by getting the certificate. Okay. So 10 people can actually have same indenture prepared mm. by same person to 10 different people. Mm. So once you have the indenture, the indenture is more or less the contract okay. on the land. I okay. mean, given this parcel of land to you, the land is at Nungwa measuring this 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 mm. then you know the size of the land you know who is giving you the land right. it states the the duration or the period mm. G uh, he's given the land out to you and it describes the parcel right then from who to who right. whether some transactions have already taken place mm. so it takes into consideration all the history okay. of the land okay. so indenture for me is more or less the contractual documents that you have okay so until you walk to the lands commission to register that interest mm. You have nothing with you right so yeah. if you if you the indenture let's say uh pearl yeah. is the family name so mm. uh, the pearl family yeah and then she gives you she sold the land to you as an individual sure. so the indenture shows your name eunice yeah acquired the land from the pearl family sure. then i buy the land from you eunice mm. all right now that indenture i have has your name and it shows that it is from the pearl family if I want to, I am now the new owner. Okay. If I want to register that land, do I have to prepare a new indenture in my name before I come to the Lands Commission to register it? What happens in that case? Okay, so you have bought the land from Eunice. Yes. Eunice got it from the Pell family. Yes. So now, since Pell family... And the indenture I have is the Eunice's Eunice name. and I. Exactly. Yes. So since I gave the documents to Eunice. I have mm. sold the land to her. Yeah. For that duration that I have given her the lease, mm. the land doesn't belong to Pearl family anymore. Okay. So if you are buying the land, mm. it is a contractual agreement between you and Eunice. So I must prepare a new indenture. So Eunice, Eunice being your grantor, mm. will prepare the documents for you. Okay. Because it's, it's, a, it's a lesser interest for mine. Okay. So the covenants 
that's where in mind mm. should be reflected in yours okay so she will prepare that document showing the covenants in mind because as you as the new lessee mm. should follow all the covenants exactly. that i laid the down original, for her. right so she has to prepare the indenture not you mm. she prepares the indenture between she and you okay and then you can and do then a I can registration use the indenture to register yes. okay now how, how how much does it cost to do the land title so if i have that indenture that process is done now i come to the lands commission how much must i pay uh we hear all manner of figures you know yes. <laughs> madam pierre we are laughing <laughs> so for me uh i think that uh some of the fees that you hear out there maybe mm. outrageous because you know what mm. people don't actually run to the right place they the go guru, the guru the boys fall child. on the guru boys mm. and when you come to the compound mm. you see a lot of people mm. going up and down parading as you know staff of the lands commission and all that and you're not but arresting them we we try our best so when you come to the lands commission uh whoever you are dealing with please look out for their id okay. ids we have a unique id card mm. and i won't even advise to advice for people to deal with people outside the csau our client service assets unit that's the only point where we have trained customer service officers mm. like you enter the bank and then you have tellers in the cubicles tellers are in there so as you enter if it's a plan approval if it's a search that you're coming to conduct if it's a land first uh, registration you see the, the cubicles labeled mm. so you walk in there confidently with your documents and you lodge your documents with them mm. and you are given a receipt or maybe something that you could track your application with mm. so once you have it look registering land in ghana is not expensive as people have actually perceived it to be how much how much would it cost me in i think if you have one plot of land that you want to register it must not even go beyond thousand ghana cities um uh as for assessment of stamp duty mm. it may vary because of the size of land and your location of land okay. because if you have a land lying around east legon that's a prime area and so most definitely the um vat you pay on the property will be more than somebody who owns land at Od odumase okay somewhere around amasam uh, asaman, uh, amasaman those areas mm. uh -huh. so for stamp duty i cannot sit here and tell you but it's just a minute percentage that you pay mm out of the total cost of the land so we 1, have a division Ghana cities. we hear seven thousand eight thousand and so i tell 10, you what i have colleagues who have come to me oh could you facilitate my job for me i say hey go to the csau and do the payment trust me you will not pay more than thousand Ghana cities are you serious because i met a guy who told me i should pay ten thousand cities yeah. for just a registration of one plot yeah why because well they feel that if they come lodge their documents with the lands commission they would experience delays so they are giving it to uh, people who could facilitate or fast track their documents for them and you listen to some of these reasons and it's because they do not know mm. yes they have all reacted or done certain things on hearsay as for the lands commission you send your documents there it will never see the light of but day that could also mean that there is a certain reputation the lands commission had come oh, to attain and oh, you, are, oh, yes. you are a reputation person oh Oh, yes, and you are speaking course. to another reputation person, and I and understand so, that. Exactly the reason why we want to embark on this sensitization right, right. and tell people come deal with the Lands Commission directly. Right. There's no need falling on people to help right. because now we have a robust system. Mm. We have a seamless process where, when you sit in the comfort of your home, you could even assess our services mm. online services.lc.gov.gh. Right. You go there, and then you realize that all our services are listed there. Mm. So, all you do is to scan your document, whatever you have you have been given instructions as to what to do and then lodge your documents online why fall on people right. and pay outrageous fees for some of these services that we uh, offer to the public walk to the csau talk to the people who have been trained to attend to you mm. and deal directly with them in fact and you pay some small amount of money I'm, I'm, okay so if i'm if all my documents are correct yeah. and i submit it to the lands commission for registration sure on the average how long should it take me to receive my land title so we have a target of doing uh, 30 day turnaround okay. time so we have 30 working days or 30 days so i want to start from that right and so well currently if you talk of first registration mm. well we are doing um between two months and three months that is if your documents are okay mm. there are no issues and your documents are clean 
clean from all encumbrances. There are no adverse claims. There are no issues with your documents. Mm. Trust me, once you lodge it, between one, two, three months, you should be able to get your certificate. Wow. I have done it for a number of my colleagues because I helped them do their due diligence and we had no issues. Mm. So it went through the system so smoothly. And at the end of the day, they were called to come for their certificates at the CSAU. I want to make a big plea. Can sure. we continue this conversation tomorrow? It's a beautiful conversation and yeah. Ghanaians can't wait. Yeah. I know they are uh, there are, You know, there are a lot of messages that are buzzing in now. And they're all, the issue is that we can't also pick calls now because our sure. time is up. up. And so I want to plead with you that we continue this conversation tomorrow so that our listeners can also have the opportunity not? to call in and ask Why the questions. Not? I mean, we are giving you free air time. So I that, think that's your way of doing yes, 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 I mean, yes. I mean, so it's yes. beautiful. We want to come back and then yes. uh, we can't exhaust the conversation on land issues. Definitely. And Ghanaians are in dire need of this information. And Definitely. we sit on very crucial information. So we want to give it out. But to <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> anyway, folks, let me say a big thank you for listening to us. Uh, unfortunately, I'm unable to pick any calls this morning, most importantly because our time is up. But I promise we'll continue this conversation tomorrow. Our resource persons have promised to come here tomorrow. I want to say a big thank you to all of you for listening in from 6 a.m. up until now. Let me say a big thank you to my people here in the studio, Elon Maulikwa, and of course, Samira Mohamed Ibn Moro, for helping me do the discussion all the way from 6 a.m. up until now to the crew. Uh, Emeka Okpara and uh, Director Beku making it possible for us to stream live on facebook and also on our tv platform we are so grateful and to you theophilus peculiar for the digital communication one big one to you uh our producer producer numero uno bright jacka for putting together yet another very wonderful show my name is noah which gonna be back on your airwaves tomorrow with another very powerful edition of the statecraft here on xylophone 102.1 fm and on xylophone tv